Hey, podcast peeps. Hopefully everybody have a good weekend. Oh, yeah. The, the best. Are you going to stretch? No. It seems like you were going No, to. I'm not. Forget it. Now his arms are crossed. Like, nope, I'm not going to let it happen. It's because I'm holding it in. No stretching here. Hey, in the podcast today, we talk retro ma- matrix phones, space wars. You know what happened? I had somebody text me right on top of my list. Uh, so now you just so moved like on to literally, that. The text came in and covered my list. But I'm back. Uh, adopted pigs, horseback riding, Lord of the Rings, labyrinth, peeing in the elevator, crab rangoons. No, it's not crab rangoons. Cre- I gotta cheese it. Cream it's cream cheese, cheese rangoons. rangoons there. Because they can't afford the crab anymore. They took that part out. Gotta get rid of that. So, got anything else? I think that's it. We have got a riot anniversary coming up. Mm-hmm. Where normally, if you're just a podcast listener or if you just listen to the show on Radio U as well, we're celebrating our anniversary, and that's going to be this Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So, if you want to join us at Radio U Riot or Radio U on our Facebook pages, that's where the show will be. All right. Well, you guys, thanks so much for listening and uh, you know being with us. Feel free to drop in this Thursday night or just hang here, whatever, as long as you're consuming Riot all the time, everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Have a great day, guys. Bye. Baby's crying. Nails on a chalkboard. Your girlfriend saying, we need to talk. The worst of the Riot. Yep, it really is that bad on Radio U. So you know what we got here? We got Olympic fever wrapping up. It's over. That's it. That was over the weekend, right? I think it was last night, the Sunday uh, co- closing. It says here Sunday's closing ceremonies. Oh, I thought it was Friday or Saturday. I don't know. I can well, only I guess tell- they're earlier than us, so you're right. They, they are on the other side of the world, so maybe it was like in the middle of the night Saturday for us, but it was Sunday for them. And then did we get coverage for the closing ceremonies on NBC last night? Did anyone watch? Well, Nikki, that's actually what I want to talk to you about. This, like, records were set during the Olympics. But not the right way. No, these will end up being the lowest rated Olympics yet. I wonder why. Unless you go back to, like, the 50s when not everyone had a TV. Sure. Now, it's probably harder because there's just other things to watch that we realize could be more interesting. I don't know. But the thing that's funny is it's not that nobody's into the Olympics. Like Zach, our sports guy. Does he he watch? He was way into the Olympics. But that makes sense. But I think you got to get the everyday person who maybe is not as interested in sports items. My, and my mom watched the Olympics. But you said she watches stuff all the time she, like that. She'll watch bowling. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if it's fair to hold her up then as like the, the everyday person you need to convince to watch the Olympics. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to get an overall number of just how far down the numbers are, but it looks like it's... Somewhere in the neighborhood of eleven percent overall. If you really that equals a lot of money. Yeah, if you really dig down, in some cases, you know, like individual sports or evenings, like are down thirty, thirty five percent in viewership. Like I people just it, aren't watching it. I don't think it helped. We didn't really have like that swell of um, USA spirit of like we were doing great, and the medal counts are also really down. So I don't think there was that. Um, that's that. A competition that you felt like you needed to watch. I think you know, the, like, hey, we're doing great. We're gonna get gold and skating. Let's watch. Let's watch. And we just no one cared. Hey, I'll tell you this much: a lot of people did seem to care about that curling. Now that see that spirit that went with that. Mm-hmm. If that could have just been during the whole entire Olympics, and so it ended up like we got our first gold, gold. in curling, first time something. ever. Yeah. 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 Way to go. Actually, yeah. the, the guy, um, we saw him in the beginning on Twitter when it was trending because one of the curling guys looked like Mario. And still does. And he still does. <laughs> and still does. <laughs> so when I saw, like, hey, we won gold, I was like, it's the Mario guy. <laughs> Congratulations to him. It just goes to show and the team looking like Mario pays off. It does because we remembered him. Yeah. So here's what we have for overall medal standings. The United States ended up coming in fourth place. Norway was killing it, but in fairness, they have to do downhill slalom just to get anywhere in that country. So, Unfair advantage. Unfair advantage. Uh, Germany at two, Canada at three, and then the United States fourth in overall medals. Uh, we ended up with nine gold, eight silver, six bronze, 23 total medals in the uh, 
Winter Olympics. Oh, Winter Olympics? I felt like we hardly knew you. <laughs> That's because we did. We did hardly know you. Yeah. We, Nikki, we contributed to the problem by not tuning in during prime time. It was just nothing that um, I felt like I needed to watch. You know, in fairness, we didn't need to watch it. We weren't a Nielsen family. If we had been a Nielsen family, it would have been our patriotic duty to at least say we were watching it, yeah, even sure. if we weren't. That's true. If you were offended or disgusted by anything Obadiah said this morning... If you weren't so dumb, I might be offended. <laughs> you must be new. You'll get used to it. The Riot on Radio, on Radio U. 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 All right, Nikki, it's time for the way back when meter Yeah? It's time to step into the future via the past, 1999. The Matrix is released. Yeah. Like, what's that? Keanu Reeves? You know, John Wick? But this time, John Wick in the future. He's wearing this long coat, did Which, some bendy things, and yeah. did all that. <laughs> and, and lots of guns still. Yeah. Mr. Weak. Uh, so, in that movie, it's so funny, like, apparently, he gets a phone, and he grabs the phone, and he hits a button, and the bottom of the phone slides down. Uh, I mean, I guess I remember that, but let me tell you what, a lot of people around the internet remember that big time. Is that the I, the, the Nokia phone you said? See? But I only know that because I read it. I didn't it. say. I didn't even know. I only read it. Is it the yellow one? Well, that's okay. Or here's is that the, thing. the color they release now? Yesterday, when I was going through like weekend whatever stuff, I could not believe how many write ups there were on how many different tech blogs, websites, whatever. Is the people are like, you don't even know. <laughs> This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, it is a Nokia. They're calling it a retro revival. Uh, and let's see, what's the actual model number on this thing? The 8110, which apparently, I guess, was an actual phone. But what this does, think about it. it it's basically just a phone. A phone. I mean, can you, you text can, on it? You can, but there are no keys for texting. So you're going to be like, you know, I don't know, 77. Three, three, four. You like, gotta go doing all that crap them. where you gotta, yeah. And uh, I guess it's also a touch screen. It has limited app support. They're saying, but in at the end of the day, it's basically a phone for talking. What's? Why do you want that? Who wants a talking now, phone? Now, if you go back a year or two, it became popular for some people to just get flip phones again. Yep. That'd be like if you had a, a tablet or a Chromebook that could handle most of your other stuff and you just needed something to do a simple text or yeah. you weren't wanting to, sh- to shell out like the $1,000 for all the phones. But I don't feel like that's enough. Like, I don't want my phone. You could give me a phone that did not have an opportunity to be a phone, and I'd be happy with it. You know, the thing about it is that's not so bad is, what? okay, we're used to the iPhone ten comes out, it's $1,100. The one you want is what $1,300. Is that, free? It's about 80 bucks. $80 for a phone? Yeah. That's almost worth it. <laughs> So what you, you could actually just carry it for fun at eighty dollars. Emergencies, like true emergencies, but you, that's it. You could sign up with one of those, like pay as you go. It's a burner. Yeah, basically. Oh my gosh, Nikki, you really are living in a cyberpunk future. You've got a burner phone. You're out there. You can only take one phone call on the it. After that, the only thing I burnt. couldn't recall from the Matrix movies was it yellow in the movie, or no, is this just black. what they're coming out with now? It's black. It's that part of the movie when he's like. He, it's before he knows what's going on, and he's sitting in his office, and he gets like a FedEx or something, and a phone drops out of it. I don't even remember it enough. I totally remember. I've seen that movie a lot. And he hits the button, and he's like, and then it's something like you got to, okay, I don't remember what he says, but something. <laughs> so it's where he's for the phone. sneaking around the office. If you want a new phone, you're like, man, mine's not working. Your screen's cracked so bad. $80. $80. You it's could have tempting. this. Think with about it. limited app support. That means nothing. I, I don't even know what that means, but it's not going to be a lot. <laughs> well, might as well be no app support. <laughs> Pretty much. The worst of the riot. Proof that you're already living in that dark future dystopia. Radio U. Over the weekend, the Air Force said something that's got people on the internet going crazy. Now, in fairness, people on the internet were crazy already. Tends to be that way. Mm-hmm. So it's this. General David Goldfein, uh, he is, could be gold fine. It's hard to know, right? Uh, he works for the U.S. Air Force. And he said 
in a keynote speech that he gave over the weekend at the Air Force Association's Air Warfare Symposium that we would be fighting in space within a couple of years. Well, can't we just work on being up there first or fighting over space? Well, here's what there's a difference. People are just like, well, wait a minute. What does he know? <laughs> what does he know about, like, is there something happening in space right now? Well, I are guess there... he probably just meant, uh, you know, that'll become a uh, a space that will fight over with each other, you know, here on Earth. Um, well, it could be. So he's talking about the need to ramp up the space force. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what we need. Oh, my gosh. We really need that, guys. Yep. All right. Everybody's a nerd dream right there. Okay. So, like, do you guys need people to, you know, fly the space planes? <laughs> like, you know, the... Is this man right here? We'll do it. The fighters, you know, kind of stuff. Because I got a lot of experience. Uh, X-Wing, TIE Fighter. X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. You're like, in case they were having trouble finding, um, you know, recruits and stuff, they're like, now you can finally do it. Free Space, Free Space 2, mm-hmm. Wing Commander. He's very good Wing at Commander it. Wing Commander 2, Wing Commander 3. That'd be best Wing if, Commander he, 4. if he remotely E-Valkyrie. controlled it from here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that's the great thing. You know, Nikki, with my virtual reality setup, I'm actually in my basement <laughs> right <laughs> now. Prepared. And I've been I've been doing that for fake, you know, for years, and now I'm ready to assume control of space drones. <gasps> space drones. He's ready to join the team. And I just assume I'll be fighting alien invaders. That that's obviously what it is that he's talking about when he says that we're gonna be, you know, fighting from space soon. Dude, we're gonna have a moon base and we're gonna have a couple of big like you know, like space stations. We're gonna need some space marines, but I'm gonna be the guy, you know, flying the ship thing. But like from here again, not from up there. You know, it's fine. I mean, I'll need to go up from time to time just to check in, check things out, whatever. But well, yeah. how exciting! Yeah, um, I know that shouldn't be exciting, but just all the space talk. Well, you know, Nikki, here's the thing. I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about the real time implications of what this means. I want to talk about the fake time implications of them saying that you know we're gonna do the space thing. It's actually kind of a bummer if you think about it, where it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? We're going to space. Well, that means we've got to fight there. <laughs> Can't. Hey, no, no, no. You have to be, oh, like, set up to be able to fight in case something happens. You don't want to not be prepared. We're going to go to space, and uh, you know what? I know. You know how there's nothing in space? Let's fight over that. <laughs> We'll fight over nothing. That's easily done. This is our nothing. (laughs) You stay away from our nothing. We got here first. Space is literally nothing there. Well, it's our nothing, so you shut up. Remember when we said things couldn't get any worse? We were wrong. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Nikki, is it too late for me to change jobs and start working for Google? Um, Can I go, like, I'm not a software engineer right now, but what if I started working on it? If you work hard, the problem is we're about ready to celebrate our riot anniversary on Thursday, and yeah. I feel like we've gone too far into this to you just break, switch. You break up on your anniversary. But There's after, poetry there. After looking at the building and the pictures from the new, is it Colorado, uh, oh, Google man. space? Boulder, I wouldn't Colorado. mind working there either. I don't know why they're just now letting the pictures out, but this place, it's a $131 million building building that they built in boulder colorado it's got you got free coffee and espresso all now, day before you get into the long list i think even beyond the building looking beautiful and there's lots of little quirky little fun spaces for you to work wherever you feel like it the amount of free stuff you get would make you very happy it's amazing <laughs> this is amazing a massage and for free did anybody else read the stand <laughs> boulder Cal- colorado is one of the places that survives yeah so like that's where the good people go and of course we all know that flag takes the evil people to vegas <laughs> but like you're already you're going to be in place you're going to be ready uh so free coffee and espresso all day uh oh you get free cooked breakfast you do all and you lunch. have to do is show up and yes. they feed you breakfast or lunch you get free lunch as well oh, and then man. when you're done it with makes your me leftovers just thinking about it you take your leftovers to the cafeteria that compost it for you so you can take that home for if you have a garden yeah i'm not having a garden but i know but again, if you did i'll have so much free time from not having to fix myself any food at all yeah you can actually then take the time at home to do that oh my gosh and they have all kinds of like weird conferences rooms like here's one there's a wall of oars like and i mean like if you're canoeing oars 
that if you know where to push correctly, a door opens and there's a conference room in there. They have a what looks like an indoor like a little camper. You go in there. That's a place where you can have meetings. Yeah, it's your meeting spot. They've got a pool hall. They've got a climbing wall that they change up every couple of months so it stays interesting. They've got rooms that are just rows of comfy chairs that you sit in with your laptop. With your free coffee and you sit by the fireplace with your laptop. It looks nice. Now, you can also um, access a on-site fitness center, which is free. and then so awesome. Free massages, like I I mentioned. So it seems like there's a lot of good stuff, which... Goes back to their school of thought of if you are happy on campus, you stay there, you don't have to leave to go eat. Like they think you'll be more productive that way. Think about this. You could come into work, work out, yeah. shower, get all cleaned up, ready, whatever, walk out. Someone else is making you breakfast and then go, oh my gosh, I You'd can't be one even, happy camper. I can't even fathom how amazing that would be. Because as it is right now, I get up in the dark, work out alone, try to throw together something to eat, and then drive in the dark, half awake. (laughs) Now, Uh, maybe we have some empty space. We have some dead space here. Yeah. We could look at a couple of machines. Great. Just in the back, and then we need someone to manage the food. Yeah. yeah, And is there anything else you need, like a secret room? Okay, just to pause. (laughs) Everybody needs, everybody needs. I've been functioning all this time without it. I'm just saying that if I had it, like when I look at that, it's like, no, it's too good to be true. How could it possibly be? But then I look down at my Android smartphone and my Chrome browser and realize that every time I click, they're making money on them clicks. That's why there's a spacious place like that. Oh, dang it. So Google's brand new um, Boulder, Colorado office, $131 million, and it shows. Dude, it looks so amazing. Plus, you're in Boulder, Colorado, which is a beautiful place to live. It's fine, though. I'll just continue over there in the wrinkly armpit of America. I feel great. But we got an Xbox. Don't say that. But we got an Xbox. Listen, that's a small percentage of people that get to enjoy that. Uh Very tiny part of our world. Why not me? Like, I could be a part of that small percent. I mean, I'm not, but I could be. But you could be. I mean, I could be for all eternity. Somebody, you know, what? like Google's just decided, and we've got our own DJ in-house. That would be perfect. So you go up, you make requests, whatever. He's the Google Play DJ for the day. (gasps) I gotta make a phone call. That goat farm is looking more and more likely every day. It's the worst of the riot. So uh, let's talk about the animal shelter. You go down. It's wonderful. You go down to the animal shelter, and instead of going to those puppy mills like Nikki does, you go. (laughs) Whatever. Didn't you buy your last puppy at a pet store? He was not from a mill, though. You don't know. He was from a breeder. You don't know. A local breeder who worked at a mill. (laughs) He was not. You know, puppy mills are local breeders if you live near them. (laughs) I know. That's how that works. (laughs) Um, So you go down to the shelter, you adopt a pet. And that's exactly what ended up happening to this Canadian couple. Uh, Sometime in mid-January, they went down and uh, they... Adopted themselves a three-year-old Vietnamese pot-bellied pig named Molly. Oh, how nice. Molly. I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? Well, it's funny you'd say that, Nikki, because they had a very specific idea as to what you do with it. Uh, you kill it and you eat it. Now, what they say is, they ended up, they realized once they adopted Molly, the pot-bellied pig, that they did not know how to properly raise it. So, authorities are saying uh, within months of owning it, they decided since they didn't know how to raise it, instead of returning it back to the shelter or finding another home for it, that they would um, process it. Mm-hmm. Do we know what processing it means? Yeah, that means that they went down and for a minimal fee adopted this pig and then got so much bacon. Isn't that crazy? So much bacon. Do you think they did that on purpose? Absolutely. Is that horrible? They say they didn't, but they absolutely did. So authorities found out because the owners... uh, Of the pig. Yeah, of the pig had Snapchatted them, seasoning, preparing the pig, talking about, you know, this was Molly, that sort of thing. Uh Authorities found out, and unfortunately, because they had adopted the pig and the pig became theirs... 
in that area, there's no rules against killing your own pet if it's in a humane way. And they're、mm-hmm. saying that this was humanely processed. And、uh, the only、um, outcome of it is that they're no longer to ever go back to that shelter. Oh, well, there's plenty of other shelters. But now they have all bacon for days. Yeah. It's weird to me, though. Like, okay, I understand. Like, shut your emotions off for just a minute and think about it. We're completely fine with going to the store to get bacon, but we're completely against killing this pig for bacon.、Mm. Well, the、There's、animal、no、had been saved, and the staff were very upset because they didn't adopt the animal out just to be eaten. So, just be eaten. It was supposed to be, you、it's、know, enjoy to... the rest of its days on a, a nice farm and not、Maybe. like I've go, it's out to the farm in a way that it's dead. Maybe it did enjoy its days. Maybe it was having a great time. I mean, up until that last moment, but like he could have been. Really, I, in fact, they were probably feeding him very well. They kept him for a couple of weeks, you know, fattening him up.、Oh, they said it took about a couple of months, and、uh, they sent, I love this in Canada, they sent constables out to the, to the home. Constable. Conferred that Molly was slaughtered humanely,、um, so they won't face any charges. So, in other words, some people are really mad about it, but nothing everything's, you can do. Everything's fine. Besides the fact that they will not ever, the BC SPCA will never allow an adoption for those, that couple again.、Uh, you know, like bacon's expensive. So I'm sure that in the end, it was. If that's what they did on purpose, that's terribly clever and horrible. Just horrible. Let me tell you what, if you saw that on a sitcom or a YouTube series,、oh, you think it was the funniest thing you'd ever seen. But when you read it and you just realize, like, it was Molly. Mo- Molly the pig. Molly bacon. Now, Molly breakfast. Seasoned. The riot. The riot. All right, pace yourself because you're going to have to do this all day for very little money. Radio U. So I'm between games right now, which is like being between books or between. Series that you're binge watching. It's tough. I mean, it feels like your life has no meaning. You're just kind of wandering <laughs> listlessly. Until you find something that grabs your attention and you're back. Yeah. I mean, I'm reading Lord of the Rings again,、uh, which it's been several years since I've read that. Man, it's wonderful. It is better than I remember it. That is a true story. Just reading it, I'm like, man, this is just fantastic. I just love it. I even love the language. Like, just the sentence structure is great. Which I don't care. Well, we don't need a game then. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I said, no, that's、yeah. not going to work. So here's what I thought. Okay, like, I, I, you may have heard me say it last week, but I've been trying to, instead of going out and buying something new, I've been trying to enjoy the things that I already have. Which, when it comes to video games, that's like listening to a billionaire that's like, instead of buying a new yacht, I tried to enjoy one of the 10 I already owned. So let's not think too highly of me.、Uh, so I went and I've got two Lord of the Rings games that I've basically. Never played. Yeah. I've got one that's like five years old called War in the North. I played that for a couple of hours. No.、Um, it, no. Yeah, And, can you just delete it so then digitally, space wise, it's still not even taking up spot? No, no, no. It's still there. Okay. It never goes away. Because if you're just like so against it. And then I got, well, you know what? It seems really great at first, but then you reach a point where you're like, this actually is not very well made. Like, this should not, this is not quite. This is not right. Yeah. So,、This、what did you、right. after that? So, then I went on to this was last year's big one Middle Earth Shadow of War. And I, at first, I'm like, okay, I don't like this very much, but I'm going to learn it. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to give it a chance to like it. And, you know, if you've got an Xbox or a PlayStation, that release was a big deal last year and blah, 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 whatever. And I thought, you know what? It's going to be perfect. I'm going to listen to Lord of the Rings music, play the Lord of the Rings game, read the Lord of the Rings book. I feel a butt coming. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I kept giving it time and I played it a little bit on Friday. I played it for a while on Saturday and I played it for a while on Sunday. And I finally just stopped. And I know that this may sound like a little harsh, but I think I hate it. <laughs> Is that like, bad? It's not, it's not even a matter of not liking something.、Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's not disinterest. Like, well, I'm sure it's fine for you, but it's just not for me. I reached a point where I was like, we're way past kind of not liking it. I actively dislike this. That's a strong feeling concerning it. I don't like it. It looks so good. And like the animation, the art, it's this beautiful thing and like all this stuff. And man, no, no. So what are you going to do now? I don't know. 
I told you, I'm without direction. I'm listless, you're just, wandering. You're just out in the ocean. And I was scrolling through all this these digital games I've bought through all these sales across yeah. the years. And Nothing. I'm just looking and I'm like, yeah, I guess. Uh, Aw, you got too much. That's why. They say that's Sometimes a thing. Sometimes it's hard. You can't, like, bring it in. So maybe take uh, 10 of the games. Yeah. Pick those. And then from there, only choose from the 10. Choose from that 10. Okay. That's not, that's not a bad idea. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not buying anything, though. Not until March. Like, end of March. Oh, yes. that's this week. You no, know, this is the end of February. No, I mean like March starts this week. Are you I saying know. in March, once it rolls around, maybe you'll be up for another game? No, no, no. I'm saying at the end of March, I'm going to buy a game. But until then, no. Okay. Now, Just play what you have. The only thing I'm going to say is every time you talk about this, someone says Monster Hunter. So I'm not, I'm not, not going to do that. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying another game. See what I just did? He's being strong. That's right. Because like everybody's like, play the new game. And I'm like, look at all these games that were new. Let's find out if they're any good. Yeah, but good. so far you're like you're not really hitting a game here that you like. You hated it. I know. And that's a shame. Because I, you know, that's money. I paid for that. I should have like rented it or something first. But no, no, no. I bought it like six months ago. Finally got around to playing it. Basically what I'm saying is I'm an idiot. But I'm trying to change my ways. Your ways, sure. The worst of the riot has no expiration date. It's born spoiled. It's the riot on Radio U. Earlier we were talking about a couple that slaughtered their Vietnamese pig for bacon. Well, they had just recently adopted it from a shelter. I think Mm -hmm. even that needs to be spoken about. Don't you think that that was disappointing to that pig? Probably, yeah, I thought, well, not only was it in the shelter for a while, but then it finally got out, and then a a couple of months in, you know, you're wondering, like, oh, are you connecting with your adopted pet? Like, is this real? Guys, come on, really? And then they they Snapchat while you've been slaughtered and they're cooking you. Is this where we're going with this? (laughs) Seriously? You have a real problem with that one. So, you know, Nikki, that's, that's just one in a long line of disappointed animals with people. Let's talk about Luis Perez on the Long Beach Freeway Saturday night. Uh, he was arrested for drunk horsing. He was riding a horse was on the r- road. Riding a horse on the road. While intoxicated. Drunk. Yeah. They said that he was about twice the legal limit. So here's the part that I don't understand. Is there a legal limit for horses or is it twice the legal limit than a car? Is it just that like operating a motor vehicle, like it still counts if it's a horse? Because I know it still counts if you're using a riding mower. Because we get a chance to, every once in a while, catch a news story of so-and-so took the riding mower down to the bar and then rode the riding mower home. Sometimes, though, that was someone who was previously, um, because of other drinking times, not able to drive a vehicle. Right. So they were taking their lawnmower. They they ride their lawnmower around. Like, at that point, sell the mower. Well, but you got to mow. I don't know. You still need that. It's not the lawnmower's fault. And hey, man, some of those zero turns are pretty fast. So I I get it. I get it. I do. Um, So, yeah, twice the legal limit, failing a sobriety test. And I don't know where the photos are coming from, but there are just great pictures of him taking his test and the horses in the background just looking on. Like, it's not his fault. Hey, what's going on? Oh, you know what? It looks like must have been the police department, actually. Uh, the California State Highway Patrol looks like they were the ones that actually posted those pictures. So. I believe if I read it correctly, then his mom had to come get the horse. Mm-hmm. So. so, And I'll bet, you know, speaking of proud, I'll bet his mom was well, very proud. He took initiative. He's walking the horse. Yeah. I don't know if you have to do That's that something. like you do when you have a dog. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, he took the horse out. Um, it's saddled properly. It's quite nice horse. Well, and I think the other thing we need to look at here is that, you know, at least he wasn't driving. Like, maybe he didn't, maybe he thought he was still obeying the law. Sure. Like, what he didn't realize is that's obviously a big safety feature or a hazard because you could get someone else to be in an accident. I mean, mm-hmm. oh, you're totally. thinking you lost it because you're just sitting there going, is that a guy on a horse on the freeway? Uh, but then also could hurt the horse and him. Mm-hmm. So uh, the horse is back safely. And 
Oh, I assume he is too. Unless his mom was like, I'm here for the horse. You can take care hand, of yourself. You can wait it out, which probably is what the answer is. <laughs> you can go ahead and sweat it out downtown and maybe we'll come and, and get you. And then he's mad because the mom loves the horse more than him. <laughs> you always loved her. The riots turn it down. And rip the knob off. Radio U. Have you ever found yourself at a White Castle? First off, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> second, Except at breakfast time. Man, we I, still really like their breakfast. Actually, do you know you can get their breakfast all day? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. It, man, it's great. Fresh cracked egg. I man. always thought I would like their hamburgers, but I don't understand it. Like, it just tastes different. It might be the onion thing. Oh, I, I don't like but I, I don't like their hamburgers at all. I know it's a, a love or hate sort of thing normally. But man, they're like a sausage, waffle, like Belgian the waffle. The Belgian thing, that for days we could have. Probably since Wendy's quit doing breakfast, that has become my favorite breakfast. Now, if I had to go White Castle versus Chick-fil-A, I don't know what I'd do because I like the White Castle stuff that much. And it it's, also has a Coke Freestyle machine. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Get that freestyle. Yes! Come on! <laughs> Come on! Uh, but in Schreierville, Indiana, uh, <laughs> a bunch of people walk into a White Castle at 4.30 a.m. One of them walks out with the napkin dispenser. This blows my mind. The electric napkin dispenser that sits on the table. I've seen this thing. When you and I went, we went to try some freestyle drink at a oh, White the Castle. Holiday flavors. Yeah, okay. Well, they had one of these, and I remember just being like, man, what this is it? a super fancy napkin dispenser. It's kind of like motion detected, and it just disperse, uh, distributes them one at a time, so that way, you know, you don't take too many napkins. Yeah. How much do you think that thing costs? Mm, well, I'm sure they're buying in bulk because it's for all their locations. Okay. Um, it's an automatic napkin dispenser. Automatic napkin dispenser. Napkin dispenser. I'm going to go with $100. Seven hundred dollars. No, they're buying more than that. Come on, they should have a better price than that. But what if they're normally a thousand and that's the price break? Then you should be at the store. Just you could pay someone to stand there. <laughs> just like one napkin, please. Here's what I want to know: What's the price breakdown? Like, how long does it take for an electric napkin dispenser to pay, to pay for pay itself? Off itself. Like, how many napkins are you losing day to day? That because that's that's got to be the message. They got to come in and be like, okay, do you know that these napkins are costing you eight thousand dollars a year from all these people? We've all seen them. They grab a ton of napkins and then they throw them away. The answer to your problem: the electronic napkin dispenser. I guess to me, who's not ordering this stuff, I would think, oh, the napkins must not be expensive. But in our field of work, we have, like, bumper stickers. People take bumper stickers all the time. They're like, I'm going to put it Take 40 on. of them. Yeah, and they're like, I'm putting it on my arm, on my shirt. And they don't realize bumper they stickers are, are actually pretty expensive to pay for. So maybe that's like the napkin of the restaurant world. Wait, are you saying we need an electronic bumper sticker dispenser? One at a time. One at a time. If not, we just came up with an idea we, for a very did. small market. You know... Back to what we were talking about because we got really distracted. So someone stole one. <laughs> someone stole one. Is there copper in it or something I, you can you can sell out of it? Uh, I would imagine that it was just somebody being stupid. I can tell you that I've got a group of friends that everywhere they we went they stole things. Everywhere, like if you go to a restaurant, went, you take a they cup stole or things. silverware or something like that. But uh, two weeks later, they said they came into. White Castle, someone like rang the doorbell, must have been in the back, and there was a note that said, please don't prosecute me, Aww, and there was a there was the napkin dispenser. It. Yeah. No questions asked. They said no questions asked, but the manager did say it was really dumb that they stole it because almost everybody that came in in that group that ended up stealing the napkin dispenser, they all paid with credit cards. So they can track them easily. <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty easy to find out who was in that group. So they didn't say if they were hunting them down or not, but man... I'm still stuck on the $700 napkin dispenser. What? Maybe yeah. if like it makes a difference, though. You go back because you want to go see that thing. Well, I haven't been back, but I'll tell you what. When I go back, I'm stopping again. And getting a napkin. Only one, though. Just one. You're hearing it for the first time, and it sounds terrible. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Hey, go ahead and grab yourself a bucket. Uh, a motion sickness bag, or pull. they call it like an air discomfort bag. Maybe pull on over. <laughs> yeah. This is, I think, 
just freaking gross. What is it? I want to talk about Jeremy Bentham. Have you ever heard of him, Nikki? I don't think so. What happened to him? Okay, Jeremy Bentham is a 19th century philosopher uh, who, oh gosh, after he died, he wanted his corpse to be stuffed and yuck, put on display. Yuck. Here's where it gets even weirder. That's exactly what they did. They stuffed him. I don't know how you do that, but they did. I guess like what, like taxidermy style or something? I think so. Um, and oh, he's been I on dis- read that. He's been on display since 1832. His dead body, like you can go to University College London, and it's like that is not a statue. That's that his dead body. That's what's left of that guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what what's going on with him? Um, well, they're gonna put his corpse on display. At oh, for the, the first time, it'll be on display now in New York. Mm-hmm. At Met Brewer's new show, Like Life, Sculpture, Color, and Body. Yuck. Oh, it's gross, dude. Ew. Like, it is gross. Now, his remains along with a wax impression of his head, and that'll be sent to New York. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like, what was that uh, display thing? Bodies. Oh, Do you remember okay, that? so wait, the wax impression of it, that, oh, that's wax, I, all right. Yeah, I think his head is... Okay, that makes, wax. that makes more sense, because I actually was like, man, how did they ever get his head to stay no, so... No, it's not. That part's not. Okay. It's still gross. Oh, yeah, it is. And these people are like, here, we're posing it, we're fixing it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I didn't think you were going to say yes. No. <laughs> Something about that is just weird. It's like that, what was the thing they had? That exhibit where bodies, they had... like I said. Bo- is that yeah. what you're... Okay. Yeah. You're like, come to body, see bodies. That was not far from my house. I was like, no, I'm not coming to see bodies. That's gross. Like that to me feels like there's like, if you look back in history, it's like that weird, like 18th, 19th century Victorian come to the circus and see the whatever. And it's like, okay, let's just stop. I don't want to see the dead this or the whatever that. I'm, I got the internet now. Like, <laughs> before the internet, I know that you guys had now the it's stuff. Not hard. <laughs> now I've got the internet. I don't need this. Um, and to be clear, like, Nikki, I just want you to know, if you said to me, listen, when I'm dead, I want you to stuff my body and prop me up in the studio. Here's how I would handle that. Yeah. I would be like, absolutely. We're totally doing that. Absolutely. In fact, I'd like put a chair over here. Like, I'm in this the is what corner. we're gonna do, like all that kind of stuff. Well, then what's what's your problem? Then are you leaving? And then as soon as you're dead, yeah. you're gonna be like, we're not doing that. You're lying to me. Yeah, that's right. No, you have I, to fulfill my my wishes for when I'm dead. You're not gonna know, which is why I'm gonna lie to you to make you feel like that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it in writing. It's gonna be in my <laughs> what's that happens when you you're dead? Your, your will. will. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's a tough one. It's, it's going to be one. hard. It's going to yeah. be difficult. No, I'm just going to tell you that's what we're going to do. And you'll be on your deathbed. Final breaths like, hey, make sure you brought me then up. Then you're not my executor to make sure all my will stuff gets done that's because fine. you're not getting the money then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I was set to inherit a lot. Like here, A small, here's, tidy amount. Here's, here's the Simpsons Blu-rays that I was never that able to sell, me? but you gave me for my birthday. I'm giving my collection back to you. Back to you. So are you not wanting that? Is that what you're saying? I'm. That's no, fine. I'll take it. And you know what? I'll cherish them just like I cherish all my other Blu-rays. <laughs> oh, great. I'll be in the back basement. Yep. But I, I'll tell you what, Nikki, I'm not propping you up. I don't care how great you are. Then like, I can't trust you as a friend. That's right. <laughs> but, I mean, this is just one example. We thought about selling the worst of the riot. But let's be honest. No one is buying this stuff. Get it for free on the Radio U app. The last couple of summers, I have been enjoying going to see old movies at the theater. Yeah. I think that is fun. Um, like, I don't, I don't know. I suppose you just have to find a movie that you like, but that's been great. And there's a decent argument for it. Well, just watch it on Netflix or something. Why do you want to go to the theater? Well, Who be, cares? If it was, especially a movie that was out even before you were born, like, it's neat to see something that uh, you, or like for you, you like Star Trek, just say it, Star Trek Wrath of Khan. Oh, yeah. Like you like, I never, I had never <laughs> seen it in the theater. That was something you, you watched a lot when you were growing up, though, with your dad. Mm-hmm. And so it has a lot of meaning to it. But yeah, you've never seen it in a theater. I ch- I've changed that now. I've seen it in the theater twice. So it kind of, ha- you have the warm fuzzies and the popcorn and the theater set up. And it's nice. Hey, it's great. And especially if you've been watching movies at home your whole life, getting a chance to see them on the big screen, it matters. 
I mean, in Star Trek 2, I saw the no smoking sign, and I was like, oh, they have a no smoking sign on the bridge. Shut up. Never saw that at home. Yeah, and you could read, there was like all this text that you could read. The color was more vibrant. Like, I went to see a bunch of different things in the theater last summer. Well, now I've got another one to add to the list. Labyrinth. What's that one? Exactly. What's that one? It's a movie starring David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly. And it's really well known because it features a ton of characters from Jim Henson's Creature Shop. So, like, basically Muppets, but serious Kermit. Muppets. Not Kermit. Not Kermit. Serious Muppets. I've, n- I've never seen it. Like, I've heard people talk about it, but I've never seen so it. So you want to just so you can check it off a list? I mean, not necessarily that, but, like, if they're bringing it back. Well, you know, if it looks interesting it. to you. I Interesting enough? Okay. Like to get to go check it out. And it just made me realize it's too early. Like February is too early to start looking, but probably in the next, you know, month or so, you could probably start checking in with local theaters to see like what they're going to be bringing back this summer. And now they have Movie Pass. You can watch all those old movies for free. I sure could. Oh boy. Yeah. Though I will tell you, most theaters, like if they're doing that, well, like the one near us. If uh, if they're doing a thing like that, it's like five bucks. Oh, so to go it. see an old movie, even at like even late at night, they're like, "Look, we know you're barely paying for this, so it's five dollars." <laughs> just come on in, and here's a free popcorn. So I mean, granted, with my movie pass, free is better, but still, like that's pretty seems good. like a fun idea. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of excited about it. April 29th, May 1st, and May 2nd. I'm gonna go. I've never seen it, so for all Labyrinth. I know. Labyrinth. Labyrinth, yeah. If I, I'll bet you. Well, you know what? You didn't work at a movie store like I did. I was say if I show you the cover, you would know what it is. But um, because I did work, I have an extensive knowledge of movies that I've never seen. All the important stuff. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, like I, man, I loved doing that. Just sitting around talking movies all night. And we, we had a pop- and we had a popcorn machine too. Oh, gosh. So like we would, <laughs> you could eat all the popcorn. No you wonder wanted. you don't like work, work because it's so hard because we don't have popcorn here for you. And what was your job in high school? Here. Yeah. I exactly. Here. Okay. Well, <laughs> I never had the popcorn machine. Huh? I would have liked that. It was uh, no. You wouldn't have liked the people. The people were the worst. To have. Never mind. Want to know what the riot is doing right now? Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at riot.radiou.com. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Now, we painstakingly did not say the name of the restaurant, but Nikki has been encountering problems at a local restaurant that used to be a favorite, and now she can't go in there because the man at the window yelled at her because he felt like she had a counterfeit $20 bill, even though it wasn't counterfeit. It was. It was just old money. It was just old. <laughs> it was just very old. But I didn't like how I was treated, so I decided I, I'm not going back anymore. Yeah. No, I've been back there twice. <laughs> it uh, seems and, like you're going more. Well, I just never told you before. And I was at, uh, well, let's just say it was a restaurant that was like the one that you went to. It was a Panda Express. And I keep looking for the manager, like... Is that him? Is that him? Is that the man? Is that him? Who yelled at Nikki? But it's getting weird over there, right? Yeah. I like to go over there and get teriyaki chicken and rice. Extra sauce with the little cup. Little, little extra sauce that I can put on my rice, and then I'll just get a panda bowl. Now, sometimes I'm tempted to get the two entree plate. It's too much, really. But, gosh, don't you want just a little orange chicken? I mean, you're there. Like, you might as well. But uh, I was there <laughs> last week, and it... It got weird in there. It, it was empty, except for one other person. I mean, there's some people sitting down, but like the line was empty. And I was like, man, this is perfect. <laughs> Get my stuff right away. And there was this lady in there, like the lady's working behind the counter. And then there was another lady in front of the counter. And everything seemed to be fine. And she kept tapping the glass and saying, that one, that one. Pretty soon, it escalated. Like she was screaming. The lady, the customer was screaming at the lady that was working. This woman had found a particular cream cheese rangoon. Oh, the crab rangoon? It, no, it was cr- just oh, cream, the cream cheese. cheese. Yeah. They they took the crab out. Yeah, crab is too much, Nikki. It's just a cream <laughs> the, cheese rangoon. For the price you're paying, you just can't get that. And so, I mean, she is, and I'm not saying like, oh, but you're exaggerating. No, this she's lady screaming? was screaming. Because she was trying to get the, the specific ones that she wanted? That's exactly right. You know, you get what you get. That's what I'm saying. I feel and like you don't throw a fit, mm-hmm. or you get what, you get what you want, or you throw a fit. No, there's you're not allowed to do that. One. I don't know. This lady, I mean, she was 
She was way too old for this. They do. Meaning Isn't that, that she wasn't three years old. And you don't know what to do with it because she's well, screaming at someone. It was one of those moments where the lady working at the behind the counter actually turned and looked at me like, what do I do? Uh, what? <laughs> and then the lady's still screaming. So she, <laughs> I can tell the, the lady working panda was just like, I don't even, I don't know what to do. So she just kept moving them aside trying to get to the one that she wanted. So she kept showing her Rangoons. Yeah. And finally was like, she finally got the one she wanted. Ugh. Now, on the one hand, that's ridiculous. But Nikki, on the other hand, you know, can't you appreciate someone that's there and they're going to make sure they get what they want? No, that's not. They're a paying customer. That's not the setup for that. You know, you're just supposed to, from the, the line, they're serving you the items. Yeah. So it should be their call on what they're offering you for that price. Well, I don't know. How many times have you gone to, let's say, Chipotle, and you're like, look at... That is not enough meat. Yeah, but you're you not totally to say just anything. scammed me on the meat there, bro. <laughs> because they're like, they're cutting back. I know, but you know, maybe this lady is the consumer advocate we need right now. So she saw that they were trying to pass off a couple of their little smaller rangoons. <laughs> so she wasn't screaming. getting the same amount of cream cheese. I don't know. I don't like anybody who screams at someone. I don't, especially no. when you're too old to be doing that. It was really something. And I love even I take when a I, step back and look at everybody looking at you. The lady, even though it was my, that lady finally left, she, she gives the lady her money. Here's what I don't get. So she's checking out. She gives the lady her money and the lady's like, here's your change. And she just like walks off, will not take her change. My, like, it was money. Well, then the store's winning. I know. Maybe that's here for your troubles because I just screamed at you. No, no, no. No, there was nothing conciliatory about the gesture. She, like, stormed off. And then she threw her food over by the, uh, where you get your, your soda, like the soda dispenser. Yeah. And she walked into the bathroom, was not in there long enough to accomplish anything. And I needed a moment to compose herself. Then stormed out, grabbed her stuff. And the lady was like, your change, your change. And again, it was nothing. just like, I don't hear nothing. Aww. And walked out. Well, you know what? I got yelled at for something unfair. The lady serving got yelled at for something unfair. We should not be yelling at each other. Or do you feel like that was nature seeking balance? Like maybe that Karma. lady, may, something. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't the the manager yelled at me. But that see, wasn't that. It wasn't but it was the fault store's either. fault. Yeah, yeah. So it was the store. Well, I wouldn't want that back on somebody. I wouldn't want someone to go through what I did. Well, they did. <laughs> And it was all over a cream cheese rangoon. Oh, man, don't fight on that either. Save it for something big. If you're going to lose it, I want to lose it on something just amazingly big. Well, maybe to this lady, those rangoons were a big deal. And then like, that's a bad day. I'll tell you, I've got a friend of mine that, like, she lives and dies on those rangoons. So, I mean, I maybe it's like that. You know, like, look, this rangoon is too small. I don't know. It's a weird one. And I just thought, Nikki, where are you? I know you should get in here. Just, I need to see this. Just Run get your phone out. Come on. Just Everybody be does that it. person that's running yeah. video. But make it look like you're not just holding it down. It's I'll like, be down. You I'll get over me? to getting that lady's face. Like, could you do that again before the camera? And just say I hi, Nikki. See it. <laughs> I know, I know. You hate the riot. Why are they on the radio? Stupid. Yeah. Honestly, we can't trust them with anything else. It's the riot on Radio U. Look, we've all been there. You're in the elevator and you're like, I'm going to pee all over this place. Just <laughs> absolutely or cover it. You walked in and you swore that someone right before you has peed all over it. And you haven't seen them, but you're like, what's going on? I've definitely experienced that. And that it's like, who's going to ele- pee in the elevator? Uh, every parking garage I ever go in, I just assume, assume. that the entire elevator from floor to ceiling is coated in at least... One coating of urine, but probably multiple. Well, something worries me on this story because normally I would think someone just pees in the corner, Mm -hmm. um, like at an elevator or in the parking garage, but not this boy. No, no, no. Wait, how old did did they say how old he is? Maybe 14. Is it? Okay. 11 to 14. I'm going to go in that window. Okay. All right. Um, They've got footage of him. This is in China. He goes into an elevator and uh, begins urinating so he's peeing in the corner but then you're seeing these screenshots he's peeing all over the buttons 
all over all the buttons. Over the buttons. <laughs> Keep in mind, that's where you're going to touch something. <laughs> The buttons. Like, you think that the buttons are safe. It's It's not not, safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. that causes um, the elevator to short temporarily to where he needed someone to help him get out. Mm -hmm. Like, what happened? Let's roll back the tape. Let's look at the footage. Oh, we see. So, basically, he peed on it, and then the button started flashing red and failed to respond. And, again, the screenshots on this are great. (laughs) Like, yeah, he peed on the buttons. What do you think? That would be a panic-inducing moment. It would be bad enough if it started happening, but then if it was, you know, obviously your fault, dude. Just waiting, and then everybody's going to know. And also, in China, though, uh, the people were scared because someone in East China, they say last August, he peed on the control panel as well, caused it to short circuit. He fell to the lift shaft of the elevator when it failed to close, and he was in a coma for like 16 days. So, so wait, okay, wait, wait. This so is a previous he, person. Did he... Like the elevator, like plummeted to the basement. The boy fell. He, he fell, fell when trying to get out because it caused the elevator to not work. Okay. So they're trying to get out. Well, and so that's. And his door, the door wouldn't close and he fell through. He was peeing on the elevator. Too. He was doing that too. How often? And this is like a residential building. You can what, tell. What are we doing? I don't know <laughs> what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. Like. Humanity, We're not doing anything. Humanity is full of so much promise and then just absolutely so much whatever this is. In China, there there's a different part where we've read many articles that, uh, especially with younger kids going to the bathroom, it's just okay no matter where they're at. So it could be, you know, you just got to go, you got to go. We've seen pictures of... Um, you know, like they'll put the little child on the uh, trash can and they're just going to the bathroom. Uh, there. To be clear, we've seen adults like that too. Yeah, gross. <laughs> like, and it's not the safe one. Like one, it's not that. It's, That's bad, but it's, it's the so worst much one. Worse. It's, it's the worst just, one. It's the it's worse than you think. <laughs> I don't know. So just again, we have to. If we don't say it, someone won't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you think about it, what was that? Was it Disney Disneyland in China? Where they the had to, one? yeah, they had yeah. to shut it down, and they were like, basically, everyone has used the park as a toilet, to clean. so we have to clean the whole place. And now we have a bunch of signs saying, "Please don't this, that, so and the other." So now we're saying something: please yeah. don't pee in the elevator. Don't go to the bathroom at all. You're it's a residential. That means there's houses full of bathrooms, and then you're touching. Oh, so don't touch the buttons. Also, I gotta go wash my hands right now, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I don't know what's happening in here at night. Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh, no! I missed it! Do it again! You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. I'll just continue over there in the wrinkly armpit of America.